I'm going to start off by reading Ephesians chapter 4, verses 10 to 28. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Paul said, Be angry and sin not, in verse 26. Therefore, being angry is not a sin. And this is what Christ says about being angry. Matthew 5, 21 and 22. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Being angry with someone without a cause causes them to be in danger of the judgment. But the ministers of God do execute wrath in righteous indignation upon them that do evil, as it is written. Romans 13, 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. And I care to mention, since I'm in Romans 13, that Obama's Separation of church and state law excludes him from being a real power that be because the powers that be are ministers of God, as I've said before, and God's house is not divided like some people's state church. So, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. They are not elected by delusional voters. 
Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. A lot of self-proclaimed ministers of God in this time of great iniquity refuse to execute wrath upon those that do evil. Hence, self-proclaimed. Ever notice that? They say, that's not of God, whilst they lie about what's written in Romans 13, about wrath, for personal reasons. And sometimes they say to me, you should be more Christ-like. And I say that the kings of the earth hide from the wrath of the Lamb which is Christ. Hello? Revelation 6, verses 15 and 16. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us, from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Not the mild displeasure of the Lamb. Revelation 19, verses 11 to 15. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Keep in mind that rod of iron as I read Revelation 2, verses 26 to 28. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. See what I'm saying? He that overcomes receives power to rule with the rod of iron. And since he has the morning star, he executes wrath also, just like the lamb does. This is something that I was led to talk about today. Some folks have made comments on some videos of mine and uh, some people seem to think that I don't have any love in me just because I execute wrath upon those that do evil. I don't know why there's so many of them, it seems like. There's been uh, quite a few, but then there's other people that understand and they and they agree and they and they see what's going on it would be nice i would like to see more people rising up and speaking strongly against these perverted religions that i talk about in so many of my videos where they have pedophiles and uh just you know people that commit horrible abominations against God's children. It would be good to see some more fellows rising up in power. I've seen uh, some women rising up in, with great uh, power all, also in Christ. So I, I care to mention that. 
But I like to I really like to see more of both do this. People get uh, comfortable in in their in their lifestyles, I, I think, with a lot of things, and they realize that when they start speaking, uh, the more bold they speak against uh, these perverted governments and religions that are false powers and false ministers that uh, that could threaten their lifestyle. But I'm talking about something that lasts forever here. I'm not concerned about this, you know, this short time of uh, that, that people have. There's so many people that, uh, you know, did according to their the, uh, things that their that their fathers or what they call their fathers did, who ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. These, you know, people get destroyed. This is important to talk about. Um, I'm not wishing it at all, but you know, if Christ said that if you find life, you know, read Matthew chapter seven. That's where it says it. A lot of people just won't make it because of uh, pet, what I think are petty things, you know, that, that they don't want to give up. So I was led to talk about this today because I see, you know, something going on here with uh, uh, so many times uh, people have said things against God's elect in their judgment, in the righteous judgment, because they don't want to deal with the truth, these things. Thank you.